What up, what up? Wimbush here, and I told you I'll bring you a 360 tutorial soon. Well, here it is. And so recently, well not recently, I guess it was been a few months, but I did a project for Transformer Cyberverse, the cartoon series on, I think it's either a Discovery Family Channel or it's one of the Discovery Channels, but I did a piece internally for them. It's taking one of the commercials that we did, putting it into a 360 VR environment. And so we have Bumblebee and we have a couple of the other Transformers in this cyber space I, I, I wish I could show you guys but I'm under NDA like I said it was under internal use only but one of the cool effects that came up with it is we're traveling through warp speed through a star field and so I'm going to show you how I created that type of effect in 360 VR using Cinema 4D so without further ado let's just jump right into it All right, so before we get started Cinema 4D, let me show you the effect that we're gonna be recreating. And so we're moving through a star field here in warp speed. It's loopable, but with this um, Windows player, it's um, stopping every time it's going through its loop. But believe me, it's loopable, especially if you bring it into After Effects and do some blending to it. But as you know, like if you have, you're inside a spaceship or in my case, we were just kind of flying through the star field when Tex was coming at us. But um, this is kind of giving you like that Star Wars warp speed type of effect here. And it's all completely done with the 360 camera and Cinema 4D. And so you could put your Oculus Quest or your Vive or whatever and look like you're flying through space. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and I can show you the quick and easy setup that we did. Or that I did, sorry. <laughs> and so if I come up into my geometry here, come down to capsule, we're gonna start off with a capsule here and we're gonna make the radius, um, we'll make it like three for now so that we can see what we're doing. You'll know why later. But for my height, let's make this like 150. And then for my height segments and my cap segments, let's do like two by two. And then for my rotation segments, let's do 10. And the reason that I'm doing this is because we're going to have like a whole plethora of these capsules, which these capsules are representing our stars. And so we're going to have a whole gang of them just so it looks like we're in a large galaxy. So the lower the segment count, the better. And then for my orientation, I want to make it, let's do Z like so. Okay. And so now let's go up to MoGraph, make a MoGraph cloner. And we're going to drag our capsule into this cloner. And the trick to this is we're going to have several cloners. So I'm going to name this one cloner one. And for cloner one, we're going to, um, we're going to make this one a radial. So we're going to go to mode and go to radial and let's do about seven of these. And then we're going to drag this way out to like a thousand like so cool. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to MoGraph, come down to random and make a random effector and make sure that it's affecting it. Yeah. So I'm in my cloner one. I went to my effectors tab. I see my randoms in there. And so I'm going to go up to my random now. And for my position, I'm going to do, let's do something huge, like 550 for my Y. I'm going to do like negative 15. And I just want to make this, um, I just want to vary them up a little bit and just randomize it, which is why we're using the random effector. And then for my Z, let's do like 6,000 just to really spread these out and offset them. And then for my scale, we can add a little bit of um, variance to it. So I'm going to click on my uniform scale and absolute scale and do just 0.9 just to vary it up a little bit. And so now I want to go to make another cloner. Now I'm gonna name this one cloner two. And I'm gonna drag cloner one under cloner two. And for cloner two, for my mode, I wanna do a grid away. And I wanna do it two by two by two. And then for my size, we're gonna go big. So let's do like 3000 by 1000 by 2000 is a good number. So if I pull out, you can see we're starting to really get a large star field here. So that we have a reference of where we're at, I'm gonna add a camera right now. So if I come up to my top palette, I'm just gonna add a camera. 
And then I'm gonna click on my camera, go to coordinates, and I'm gonna just zero everything out so it's in the direct center of my scene. So I'm just clicking the tab button to go to the next attribute. So we just wanna make sure our X, Y, and Z and our rotation are all zeroed out so it's in complete and absolute center. And so there we go, there's our camera there. And let's keep creating our star field. So I'm gonna come up and make another cloner. And I'm gonna name this one cloner three. Then for cloner three, I'm gonna drag cloner two under cloner three. And for this one, we're gonna leave it at um, a linear and we're gonna make our count like, instead of three, let's do 30 to make it really large. But as you can see, it went 30 vertical cause it's doing 30 Y plus 50. So we're gonna zero this out and I'm gonna come down to my Z axis here and I'm gonna make this one like 3000. And as you can see, our camera is pointing in that direction in our Z positive direction. And as I made it 3000, it's going way out into the distance. And so I'm going to come back up to this cloner. I'm gonna to go to effectors. I'm just gonna add that random effector into here to just, you know, randomize it a little bit. And if I come down to my camera mode, you can see we have all of our stars all around us. And for now, don't mind that they look like big poles because we're gonna make the radius shorter once we finish. But since they get kind of hard to see, we're gonna keep our capsule radiuses at three radius. And so now we're gonna add one more cloner. So I'm gonna go back up to MoGraph, come down to cloner. I'm gonna name this one cloner four. And I'm gonna click and drag right under cloner four. And then I come under my objects tag. And this one, I'm gonna make my mode to radial with like a count. Yeah, five is fine. Um, radius, we're gonna spread this way out. So let's make it like 1000. And as you can see, we're having a huge star field all around us. We're gonna offset this a little bit. So let's do something like offset it by like 67. It just tilted it a little bit. If I go into my camera mode, and then let me go back turn my offset down to zero so you can see so all it's doing is rotating our cloners a little bit and then what I'm going to do now is go to like my offset variation let's say like 127 and that's just you know kind of randomizing our tunnel that we're going to go through and so that's basically our setup for that if I come back down to my capsule I'm going to make my radius one and this one actually depends on how big you want your stars to be. Like when I did my render, I think I did at 0.5 just to really make them skinny. You could probably even go smaller than that. And then we want to kind of texture these and since stars are just gas bulbs up in space, let's just put like a, um, let's put a generic material on there just with luminance. So I'm gonna turn everything else off just leave my luminance on and then drag that onto my capsule. Now here's the trick to making it 360 VR. Now, if I go to my camera and under spherical, all you have to do is enable your, um, your spherical camera. And if I click render, there we go. Now we have an equitangular hyper tunnel and all we have to do from here is animate it. So if I have my coordinates at zero, at frame zero, let's say, oops. So I'll make that zero. Let's make this like 150 frames long. So if I'm at frame zero, I click on my Z, make that zero, go all the way to the end. And let's animate this to like 6,000 centimeters. And then as we're scrolling through, it looks like we're scrolling through a star field. And if your computer is running slow, you can always come up to your cloner, go under object and under instant mode, you could do render instance. And this should help out with all of that. So if you get a render instance for all of them, it should run back a lot smoother and it should render a lot faster. I mean, that was like a millisecond. And then that's basically how you set that up. Like if you want to know 
the settings that I worked with, I believe it was 4096 by 2048. And this was just that mono. And you hit render and there you go. So that's what your star field looks like in Equitangular. And then again, once you have it all rendered out, this is what you're going to get. So you could go from there, render it out, bring it into After Effects and composite it into your scene. And, you know, if like you're doing a Star Wars 360 fan film or if you just want to fly through space in general, hopefully this helps you out there. And as always, I'll put this up on my Gumroad. I'll put my project file up there so you can either just render it out yourself if you want to. It's already built for you or you can use it as reference. You can manipulate it, use it for whatever you want. Just let me know what you guys use it for. If you do use it, I love seeing you guys on Instagram tagging me on your stuff that you use in my projects for. So please let me know. You know, I just like seeing what you guys are coming up with. And so hopefully this helped you guys out, especially for my 360 VR folks out there. If this did, leave me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep creating. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.